Hi everyone, uh, today we're going to talk about a medium weight game called Revolution. So Revolution is uh, designed by Paul Dewberry for Steven Jackson Games and it is sort of a political game where each player plays as the leader of a faction trying to start a revolution in this town over here. All right. So in order to get a revolution going, you have to accrue support for your faction so that when the revolution happens, your faction is going to take over the town and uh, be in charge of what happens after that. All right, so that is the objective of the game. Let's go ahead and look at what we have here. This is the main board, which represents the town. We have uh, different areas in the town, like the plantation, the cathedral, the harbor, and stuff like that. And uh, around the perimeter of the board, we have the uh, points track, which indicates how much support your faction has in the revolution. We also have these individual player sets. Each set consists of a bid board, uh, where you'll be placing some bids, as well as a player screen, which helps you hide your bids. Uh, and you have some cubes, uh, which uh, various actions will allow you to place on the board to indicate that you have control of those parts of the town. You also have a little marker in your color that lets you keep track of the support for your faction. Uh, let's get started with what happens in the game. All right. So at the beginning of the game, uh, each player will receive some of these tokens. Everyone receives the exact same tokens. You get one of these red fists. You get one black envelope, and you get three gold coins. Every player is going to have the same stuff at the beginning of the game, all right? Now, what are these tokens? These tokens are what you use to influence various important people in the town in order to earn something from them or to influence different parts of the town, all right? So these are the three types of influence that are available to you in the game. The red fist symbolizes force. So you can force people to do what you want. The black envelope is blackmail. So you can blackmail people into doing what you want. And the gold coins are money. And you can bribe people into doing what you want, right? So of these, uh, force is the strongest uh, form of influence. So that's the first thing that gets evaluated. If multiple players are tied on force, then you will evaluate Blackmail, the next strongest type of influence, and then if you're tied on blackmail as well, then you will evaluate uh, what, who goes to spend more money to influence all of these important individuals in the town. So those are the tokens you have. Let's go ahead and talk about how each round progresses. There are no turns in this game, everyone's going to play simultaneously, but each round does have several phases, and then you're going to go through them together, and we'll see what happens at the end of each round, okay? The first phase in each round is called espionage. The espionage phase is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is you're gonna either lift your screen or just take all the resources that you have available for the current round and make sure that every player is able to see that these are the resources you're gonna be bidding with for that round. That's all there is to it, it's pretty straightforward. And this is the espionage phase, all right? The next phase of uh, each round is where the bulk of play happens. This is called the bidding phase. All right. In the bidding phase, you're going to take uh, the resources that you have and you're going to assign them to different people in the town so that you can try to influence them and you know, you're trying to uh, beat your opponents, your rivals in influencing these people so that you get benefits from them as well as influence in different parts of the town. All right? So the way in which bidding happens is pretty straightforward. I'm going to take my bid board out and put it here so that it's very clear to everyone. You have three different types of resources that you're using. You have force, blackmail, and gold. And you have 12 people, uh, 12 important people in the town that you're trying to influence, okay? So let's go over some uh, basic bidding rules first, all right? These squares here are colored, so these rectangles, these boxes for each uh, important person in the town. They're colored either red, black, brown, or uh, red and black, all right? This indicates what forms of influence you can and cannot use on each of those people. The people that are colored in red cannot be influenced by force. Uh, these are your military dudes and, uh, you know, uh, special forces fighters and stuff like that. You have a general, you have a captain, uh, you have a rogue, 
the mercenary, and the apothecary who cannot be influenced by force. So you cannot use your fist token on those spaces, all right? And then you have these black spaces for the innkeeper, the magistrate, the spy, the rogue, and the mercenary as well. They cannot be influenced by blackmail. You cannot blackmail these people because they already know what's what and all the secrets of everyone in the town, all right? And the last type of influence we have is gold. You can apply gold onto anyone on that board. Everyone takes money, all right? Everyone takes your money. Uh, the middle row of people in the brown boxes are sort of uh, the patsies in the town. They can get forced into doing stuff, they can get blackmailed into doing stuff, and they will also take your money to support your revolution, okay? So let's see how we're gonna actually place those bids. Uh, remember that all of this is happening behind your screen. Your uh, rivals don't know where you're assigning your influences, okay? So you're gonna take these things and put them on the person that you want to influence, all right? You can put multiple tokens on the same person as long as that person is available to be influenced by that type of token. All right, the other constraint that you do have is that you can only place six bids on the board, right? If you've placed more than six bids on the board accidentally or for whatever reason, uh, in the next phase during resolution, only the first six bids that you've placed will actually count, right? We're just gonna ignore the bids after that. It's also uncommon that you will have so many tokens to place that in, so it's not really something that's gonna happen often. You don't need to worry about it, all right? So once you've finished uh, placing your bids, they're still gonna be hidden behind your screen, all right? Once all players have finished placing their bids, we move on to the third phase, which is called resolution, all right? You're gonna lift your player screen, and you're gonna look at everyone's board and decide who gets to influence each of those important people in town, all right? We'll start from top left and go left to right and then come down, all right? So the way in which this is resolved is that you're gonna look at each type of influence in a decreasing order of strength, all right? So let's look at the general, all right? We have no force on the general here, zero force on the general on my bid board. We have zero force on the general on blue's bid board. We have zero force on the general on yellow's bid board. I also want to take note that force can't be used on the general anyway, so that was moot, all right? And then once that's tied, we'll look at the next type of influence, which is blackmail, all right? I have one blackmail on the general, and neither blue nor yellow have placed any blackmail on the general, which means that I get to influence the general, all right? So the general provides your revolution, your faction in the revolution with one support. So you're gonna go up on the support track here by one, he provides you with one force for use in the next turn. And he lets you influence the fortress. So you're gonna take your cube and place it in the fortress to show that you have some influence over there right now. All right, now you're gonna do that with every individual in the town, every important individual in the town, and you're gonna go through them and decide who gets to influence each of those influence, uh, individuals uh, among the players, all right? And every individual will give you a different sort of benefit. And as you do this, you can take the tokens that you had used in the previous round and throw them away. If you have any unused tokens, for whatever reason you decided not to use them, those are gonna get discarded as well. You cannot carry tokens over from a previous round onto the next round, okay? So let's quickly go over the benefits that each of these people provide. The captain also provides one support for your faction, one force token, and it lets you influence the harbor. The innkeeper provides three support for your revolution, one blackmail token and influence in the tavern. The magistrate provides one support, one blackmail token and influence in the town hall. That's gonna be over there. Uh, the priest provides six support for your revolution, so a lot of support, and influence in the cathedral. The aristocrat provides five support for your revolution, not bad. Uh, three gold and influence in the plantation. The merchant provides three support for your faction, five gold for the next round, and influence in the market. Where is the market? Oh, the market's right there. And then you have the printer. The printer provides 10 support for your faction, All right? That's a lot of support. And then let's go to the last row. In the last row, we have the rogue. The rogue gives you two blackmail tokens for the subsequent round. He doesn't give you anything else, but two blackmail is pretty powerful. 
the spy lets you do some funky stuff, all right? The spy lets you replace one influence cube that's already on the board with one of your own. So you're gonna take one of your opponent's cubes, typically give it back to them, and in its place, place your cube on the board. That's what the spy lets you do. The next guy is the apothecary. The apothecary lets you swap two cubes locations which are already on the board, all right? So let's say for example that you got, you know, blue over there and green over here for whatever reason, uh, maybe because you want to consolidate one or you already have too many in one location, you're going to be able to do something like that, all right? That's what the apothecary lets you do. And let's take a look at the last guy, the mercenary. The mercenary gives you three support for your faction and one force token for you to use in the subsequent. All right, so that is uh, how resolution goes. You're gonna go through all of this. At the end of resolution, you're gonna have placed some cubes. You may have earned some influence tokens for the following round, and you may have gained some support, which means your score in the perimeter of the board is gonna go up, all right? Once resolution ends, we come to the last phase of each round. This is called patronage, all right? During patronage, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna look at what uh, influence you already have, what influence tokens you already have, all right, for the next round, and you're gonna top that up to five, all right? So if you have two tokens, you're gonna go ahead and top it up to five using gold, by taking three gold, all right? If you already have five tokens, or if you have more than five tokens, then you're not gonna get any more tokens, but as long as you have fewer than five, you will top it up to five by using gold. This means that even if you did not earn any influence tokens in a round, you will be able to start the next round by having five gold, which you can then use to do some stuff, all right? That is the patronage phase of the round. That is the final phase. Once patronage is done, you're gonna start the new round by once again doing espionage where everyone reveals what tokens they have, and then you'll do bidding, and then you'll do resolution and patronage again, all right? That is the structure of round, that is how the game progresses. Let us quickly look at what's gonna happen on the board as the game progresses. More and more cubes are gonna start appearing here and you will start running out of these white squares. The game will end immediately at the moment when every white space on the board is filled. If there are no more locations for you to place cubes, the game ends immediately and we will assess who has uh, won the game by having their faction take over the town after the revolution, okay? And the way you're gonna do that is by seeing whose faction has the most support. So over the course of the game, uh, uh, in each round, as you influence these people, you're gonna be gaining support for your faction. At the end of the game, you will get a large amount of support for your faction by gaining control of different segments of the town. You gain control of different parts of the town by having the most number of cubes in that location. For example, uh, if you had the most cubes in the plantation, you would gain 30 support. If you had the most cubes in the fortress, you would gain 50 support, and so on and so forth. If you were tied for most support in any location with uh, one or more of the other players, then you will divide the support equally among all of you and add that to the score of your faction, all right? So once you've done all that for each location, you're gonna have a final score which indicates how much support your faction has and the player whose faction has the most support wins the game, all right? That's Revolution, folks. It's a pretty chilled out, medium weight game. Uh, go ahead and try it out.